this formation appeared opposite that meteorological pictogram I showed you, a field opposite. And I was one of a few people to go into it before it was harvested. And I was fortunately one of the, maybe the third person to enter it before anyone else did. And I saw throughout three circles, plants bent 90 degrees without even a crease. It was like they were steamed into position. And that had a dramatic impact on my um, awareness of the real phenomenon. Late one night, I sat in the larger circle with two other people, a well-known researcher at the time and a friend. And as an experiment, the researcher, a lady by the name of Rita Gould, said, um, let's try something. And she put a tape recorder in the center and put it on play and record. Left it for about 30 minutes. And at the time, the weather conditions were really bad. I had be began to hear what were the suitable conditions for these balls of light to appear and maybe genuine crop circles to form. And it was drizzling at the time. And this is not good for this event. And I was very, very tired from running all over Wiltshire looking at many crop circles that admittedly, all three of us were falling asleep. And we left the tape on play and record and forgot all about it. Anyway, when we played that tape back, there was an un incredible sound on it. It clearly recorded us talking, even snoring, but it also recorded something else which came in quietly and got louder and louder and louder until it drowned us out. And it was a pulsing, whining sound, almost like a 50s B-movie flying saucer sound. And I asked a technical friend, uh, very knowledgeable in electronics, soon after, how could it be possible to record a sound that we did not hear on ordinary recording equipment? And he said, well, maybe what you recorded was the sound of a magnetic field. And because ordinary recording equipment is very, very sensitive to magnetism, you know, the tape heads are magnetized, and the tape itself is magnetic tape, maybe this is what you heard um, that was pulsing at an ultrasonic frequency, thus you couldn't hear it. Now, about three days later, I traveled away from Wiltshire, about 150 miles up to Derbyshire, where there had been no crop circles uh, up to this point, to my, uh, where I was living at the time. And one night at about 3 a.m., I awoke abruptly to a very strong clairvoyant feeling. Men, I've had many of these throughout my life, and I 99% of the time listen to them because they always seem to lead to something interesting. And I felt compelled to get out of bed and go and see what was on television, that there was something very important. And I dragged myself out of bed and I reached for the television guide, the UK television guide, opened it up and the first page that it, I turned to had this photograph, this image on it. And it said underneath, capture the beauty of our landscape to the sound of specially chosen music. Now, when I looked at this picture, I couldn't see the landscape. All I could see was a close-up of bent wheat heads. But something went off in my head. Sound, plant bending. Maybe the bending is done by sound. People have heard the trilling sound. Some people have even recorded, ourselves included, inaudible sounds. And I soon after then rushed, uh, later that day, rushed to two book sources, two primary book sources, the Encyclopedia Britannica and an amazing book which has a lot of very pertinent information to crop circle research called The Secret Life of Plants. I'm sure some of you here tonight have read this book. In the 1960s there were many experiments um, exposing many plant species to different types of music, different notes and different frequencies. And amazingly, the things that they found in laboratory conditions doing this were identical to what we've been finding in the fields. For example, blown nodes. There, is, there has been, for some time now, a lot of evidence. And Dr. Levengood, very well-known biophysicist for more than 10 years, has been looking at this under a microscope evidence of a very high frequency energy source going into the plants and internally heating it, causing expanded nodes. These are the nodes. 
And interestingly enough, this is where the most water is in the plant. Remember I said that dragon energy seems to like water? Well, not only that, but it also, there's evidence that this energy causes an internal heating effect. And for some, they have thought, well, maybe the energy is microwave, because we all know that microwave energy can internally heat things. But so can ultrasound. In fact, in industry, they'll use ultrasonic ovens to cook things because it's a lot cheaper than using microwave energy.